Welcome to economictimes.com. I'm your host, Pallavi. ET Future of Jobs Summit aims to bring together business leaders, policy makers, innovators, and thought leaders to discuss the skills and jobs that will shape tomorrow. Through this initiative, our eminent speakers and industry experts will share their insights on the changing job landscape. For today's prevailing conversation, we have with us Mr. Ved Mani Tiwari, COO, NSDC. Mr. Tiwari has over 30 years of professional experience where he served uh, the government of India and worked with private sector and infrastructure, including energy, urban development, and transportation, to name a few. Mr. Ved Mani Tiwari serves as the Chief Operating Officer at National Skill Development Corporation, NSDC, and is responsible for managing the organization's operations. Welcome to EconomicTime.com. Thank you so much, Pallavi, uh, for inviting me and uh, sharing my thoughts. So let us now begin. My first question to you uh, would be that as part of the vision and the mission of NSTC, uh, you know, narrowing the existing gap between the demand and supply of skills, what do you see as the main challenge or challenges that emerge in trying to narrow this gap? So what we have uh, observed over the last one year that uh, there have been some rapid changes in the skill and the work ecosystem. Uh, uh, this what we are observing is that a lot of technologies, new technologies that are coming up, uh, they are taking, uh, they are reshaping the uh, entire man-machine interaction. Uh, when industrialization happened, uh, the uh, muscle job was taken over by machines. Now with in the AI ML world, the lot of cognitive work is being taken over by the machines. So this uh, realization that workplace is changing dramatically because of the advent of the technology uh, is one challenge that we are facing. The other thing that has happened is that geostrategic uh, issues are shaping the supply chains of the world. And uh, because of this uh, realigned uh, supply chains, the value chain itself is changing. And the new value chain requires new skills. So that's another area that is emerging. And the pandemic has uh, also uh, induced a lot of uh, work behavior changes mm -hmm. because of the frequent shutdowns that, that the businesses are observing. So these three changes that uh, oncoming new technologies, uh, new geopolitical realities impacting supply chains, and pandemic induced uh, work behavior changes uh, warrant a responsive education and skilling system. So that is the area of challenge that we are focusing right now. In fact, uh, if you look ahead, you know, if you look for the future, in your opinion, how does year 2030 look to you? I mean, what will be the skills that will be required in the next eight years or so? So as I uh, just now uh, discussed that the technology is changing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happens is that whenever there is a technological shift, uh, there is a lot of uh, need shifts also happen. Right. So human needs in 2030 are going to be different from what, what they are today, from subsistence to uh, physical level uh, uh, fulfillment. Uh, we will have more care and emotional needs in 2030. And that is one area where we, I believe that uh, the nature of jobs will change a lot. A lot of focus will move towards the uh, emotional and uh, uh, the softer aspects of the human needs. And uh, we have always, if we go through the history of uh, uh, the agrarian economy first and then the industrial economy, we will find that whenever a big shift in the production methods have happened, it has called for a, a completely new paradigm about in the social society. Uh, uh, and the uh, all the spheres of human. Mm -hmm. So that is where the man-machine interface, both at the uh, auto 
information level and also at the cognitive level uh, is the new area that that we we will be seeing. Sure. In fact, uh, you know the, the changes that you just mentioned, besides the technological changes, uh, the emotional needs, and also the behavioral changes, are need, are need to be taken into consideration. But also, from you, we want to understand what percentage of graduates, as of now, or at this point in time, do you think are employable? Uh, is there a dissonance? Is there a gap between the talent emerging from universities and the skill set that organizations demand, and uh, you know the skill sets which are already there? So how do you uh, look at this and you know, what is the industry feedback uh, on this so far? Uh, by nature, the education ecosystem is not a very dynamic in nature, uh, whereas the world of work is very dynamic. So what has happened is that over the last two, two and a half decades, the world of work has changed uh, at a very rapid pace and world of education is trying to respond to it, but uh, uh, there's a lag. And that lag calls for and bring more and more and more uh, from the work to the world to the real world education. Right. That is where I think the uh, we we now have have enabling framework. Uh, we our regulatory system is responding to that uh, through academic bank of credit and other uh, regulatory changes that are uh, happening at a rapid pace. We have seen all uh, last uh, few months. So I'm very confident that uh, India will take lead in this and uh, our young graduates uh, will uh, become part of the global value creation. In fact, uh, talking about the national education policy, there has been a lot of focus on uh, digital learning. So we want to understand from you to what degree is uh, there a need to reskill. You know, you said they, they won't be called uh, as unemployable, but yes, of course, there's a scope for a need to upskill or reskill the existing talent. So is this something that needs to be done urgently and on a mass scale? And if so, then what are the new emerging models of learning in, in your opinion? Uh, recently, uh, post pandemic, uh, the, the automobile world became a real example of how semiconductors have penetrated almost every sphere of our life. Uh, the automobile production all over the world suffered because of the chips not being available. And uh, I was talking to a few uh, business leaders in the automobile world. Uh, it was really, uh, people realized only when they saw that supply chain uh, bottleneck that every single component that is going into an automobile today is having a dedicated chip or is a configurable uh, thing. So much so that the mechanical technician who, are, who is doing the work on brake assembly or engine, etc., they, did, they never realized that over just last two decades, the digital has entered into every sphere of our uh, uh, production uh, ecosystem. So that is one area where I feel that the conventional world of manufacturing is changing. Mm -hmm. And the way products are being designed and delivered is changing dramatically. So the reskilling, upskilling is a need of our, not only for the uh, young graduates but is also a big need for working professionals because uh, everybody talks about digital that uh, how digital is changing the businesses but if you look at the how semiconductor is changing the business that itself is a passive uh, change that is happening that every single um, component of manufactured manufactured component will have a chip integrated into it Every single interface of uh, services will have a code integrated into it. So this combination of chips and codes are the new world and, and that will drive the reskilling upskilling for the future. In fact, uh, if we go by a recent report by NASCOM, it says that you know the demand and supply gap for digital tech talent is going to multiply more than three times by 2026. So what would this widening gap mean for the tech industry, especially in the Indian context? How will leadership and organizations have to adapt at a structural level? I mean, how do you look at this? One good thing is that uh, tech world has always risen to the challenge of uh, skilling, reskilling, upskilling. We have seen that uh, whenever the technology has changed, uh, the, prof the working professionals have quickly adopted to new technology. So. Uh, 
a lot of this gap would be filled as, as i told you that now every single uh, area of work today is either getting a chip embedded or getting a code embedded so that is an opportunity that none of us are looking at today and that calls for that if we uh, instead of just looking at the new emerging technologies and how new people will enter into the uh, world of work if we start focusing on the large uh, number of working professionals who are still below uh, in the uh, age range of 30 to 35 because they will be serving the uh, humanity for next two two and a half decades uh, looking at that pool and making that pool techn technically and digitally uh, upskilled is what i would like to focus and and if we focus on that area i have no doubt that uh, th this is an opportunity and not a challenge for for those who are coming from a uh, world of educational skill. Sure, sure. In fact, I would like to bring to light another very important aspect of the entire conversation that we, we are into, uh, that in India particularly, there is a gender digital divide. So what percentage of women are part of Industry 4.0, if we may you know, understand it this way, and do they have digital skills to adapt to a fast-changing industry? How do you look at it? So I go back to my engineering college days. Uh, during those days, there were hardly any girls uh, in, uh, in engineering courses. Uh, that scenario has changed dramatically. Today, uh, that is not the case. Now we are having a conversation around that. Are there enough women in the uh, tech world or digital world? There's this very conversation is an important step in the right direction. And uh, women have uh, demonstrated that, that they are second to none. Uh, what we need to do is that whenever there is an opportunity uh, to uh, promote uh, a woman into a techn technology role, the managements have to take bold steps. Uh, and, has, ha and we have to back our gut. Uh, women have demonstrated in uh, almost every spheres of life that they are second to none. And that's where the management commitment has to come into picture. A uh, lot of organizations are today focused on uh, this gender divide and want to take proactive, positive measures for greater inclusion of women in the workforce. And uh, whenever we meet uh, industry uh, leaders, we all talk about it. And I can assure you that uh, industry is conscious of it. And uh, th there is a greater level of management commitment today to bring women into uh, technologically challenging roles. Absolutely. In fact, uh, can you also help us understand what exactly are we doing to ensure that women in tech have equal opportunities and not left behind in what is being called as the fourth industrial revolution? It's, it's a continuation of what we already discussed. But if you would like to add something to it. Uh, I would not have. I would not like to uh, take any special measures for fourth industrial revolution as such that I was talking in the context of emerging uh, work, for work area in 2013. I would rather talk about that women, uh, how do we provide equal opportunities to women in the tech uh, area. And uh, in that case, what we are doing is that uh, we are doing lots of uh, women specific programs. Uh, many of our uh, skilling uh, courses are focusing on women and a uh, lot of uh, new uh, skill partners that we are uh, actively looking for. We are uh, work, talking to them, how do we uh, in, provide uh, women specific tech courses. Many a times what we find is that the uh, in the uh, remote corners of the country, uh, there, there's a different urban conversation, there's a very different rural conversation. And in large parts of the rural India, still the it is considered that the women are good for only certain roles. We mm -hmm. have to uh, break that notion of women performing uh, those roles. And at, at NSDC, we are, we are consciously talking about it. We are uh, making th those efforts that how do we bring women into those uh, sectors, uh, occupations where they were not there earlier. 
the ET Future of Jobs Summit is going to host several more conversations around the future of technology jobs. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for being with us.